All right, well, it is 6.40 and this meeting started and was adjourned on April 1st. <clears throat> so we had already read the legal notice and um, Mr. Slora had made an adjustment to the uh, way the text read. So at this point, I'd throw the uh, meeting open to the uh, petitioner and um, let him proceed. Uh, great. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm Rob Levesque from our Levesque Associates. Here with me uh, via video is Mr. Salura. He is the proponent for the proposed use. Um, I apologize that my uh, my current location does not have a, a video camera, but I have plans to share with you this evening. If it pleases the board, I'd like to bring those up and uh, start from there. I did have a question, even though I just invited you to start. Um, on the application itself, it lists the owner as Sharon Hollick. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, do you have a, a contract or a lease of some sort with uh, Ms. Hollick? I believe Mr. Salura has a purchase and sale agreement. Okay. That was my question. We Thank do. You. you do? Okay, great. Go ahead, Mr. Levesque. Thank you. Uh, I think somebody needs to enable that. Are we sharing? Yeah, if, if possible, that would be great. There we go. Thank you. Okay, with it, uh, can I just confirm that you're looking at my site plan set? Yes. yes. Great, thank you. Um, okay. So I'll start off with the, uh, the project location. Um, the project location is located at map at parcel 29. Um, it is located right here. We have 91 to our west. Um, and we are pretty much nestled right between the two roadways. Uh, there's a uh, wetland system that runs along the front of our property that I'll, I'll show you shortly. Um, this is our existing conditions plan, sheet EX1. Um, Route 5, State Road, is out uh, to our west. Uh, the subject property has a series of wetland resource areas that run through it. Uh, there is a perennial stream, which carries with it a 200-foot riverfront area, and a BBW, bordering vegetated wetland, along that, uh, as well as the other resource areas associated with those two resource areas. For So, for example, we have floodplain. Um, and we have uh, bank, uh, bank of the uh, resource area. Um, there's an existing crossing right here. So it's an existing 36 inch culvert. Um, we anticipate crossing the same. We conducted test pits throughout the site. We did delineate the property. I believe we um, walked the property with Mr. Jackson. I think he was one of the uh, conservation commissioners that were there. Uh, we did receive a determination on the wetland boundaries. So we have that portion of the wetland process behind us. We um, are in the process of preparing a notice of intent for the uh, submission to the Conservation Commission. So this is the subject property. We are proposing to construct a, a storage facility that would have a curb cut on Route 5, run back, uh, we would have an infiltration basin off to the left side. We'd have a 20,000 square foot footprint building. Um, and I'll show you the elevations of that building, which I also have available. Uh, we have another 5,400 square foot building and then a 4,600 square foot building. The center building would be a climate control building, all storage, but climate control, uh, which is uh, kind of the rage these days in the whole storage facility world. Um, and then these would be kind of your traditional storage units 10 by 20s, uh, 20 by 20s, those types of things in, in your standard uh, metal um, storage building with the, you know, the overhead door, et cetera. The area within. Uh, Excuse me for a moment, please. Could, yeah, now, could you please repeat the square footage of the building as it really is, since there was that little bone of contention about what, the, what was printed in the ad versus the actual square footage? Sure. The, let me confirm the actual square footage of the building. Uh, I know it's so it's 20,000 uh, 
square foot, 20,800 square foot footprint. So what's that? 60, what, 20, 20 what? 20,800. 20,000. 20, that's a footprint, right? So that's multiple stories. Mm -hmm. Times three is what it is. So it's, yeah. I don't know, you have 60,000, um, 60,000 now, 200. 62.4, right? Yeah. Yes. 62,400. So there, yep. So three story building, sixty-two thousand. I'm sorry, but it, it's the phones are not all coming through clear to me. They're kind of breaking up. The the sixty thousand four hundred twenty. I'm sorry. No, nope, let me clarify, and I'll try to speak uh, right into the microphone. So sixty-two thousand four hundred square feet total. Uh, with that's a three story building. So the footprint is twenty thousand eight hundred square feet. Got it. Okay, and then. Uh, between those buildings, within the yard area, there would be bituminous concrete um, and an associated drainage system. Uh, we have drive aisles of approximately 30, uh, 30 feet so that we can traverse around the site so that you can get a couple of vehicles behind or be by each other and also have somebody loading um, as needed. We do have a fenced in area associated with this. So there would be a, it would be a controlled area. Um, and there's guardrails and fencing associated with the kind of the access way that you kind of see along the perimeter of the site. We are staying as, uh, as far away from the resource areas as we can and still make the program work. We do have limited access. We are kind of hugging the south side of the property in order to try to stay as far out of the riverfront area as possible, which is obviously a conservation related issue, but certainly is, is germane to the, the site planning um, choices that we've made. This is our proposed grading plan, which is sheet C5. Again, the, the buildings that you saw previous, there are proposed catch basins that will pick up the stormwater from either side. As you can imagine, these buildings are flat, so it's pretty subtle grading. So we kind of grade to the middle. And we have high point grade breaks here and here. So this comes this, the water runs this way, and then back to the middle, and then the water runs this way. So we're picking up our drainage in deep sump catch basins, running that through our conveyance system, through a proposed water quality unit to these stormwater systems that you see here on the north side and on, we'll call that the west side. There's a septic system proposed for the proposed use because there is a small office. That septic system is located back here. This is the leach field area. This is another sheet C6 that shows a little bit more detail. It shows the, um, the septic tank um, pump chamber and then the leach field here. We have utilities coming in along the proposed access road with water, gas, um, power, you know, communications, etc. These round structures that you see are catch basins and manholes. Catch basin here and here run through a manhole, catch basin here runs to the same manhole, another catch basin here runs to the same manhole and then into a proposed water quality unit that will basically remove total suspended solids. And then from that, it will run out into a flared end section here that has, um, this basin has a sediment four bay right here built in. So that's been sized to handle first flush. And we have roof leaders that are also running into this basin. Uh, so we're handling the roof runoff and we're handling the roof runoff from this 5,400 square foot building over here back behind with this trunk line that then runs to the north of this basin. Within the basin, we have yard drains and, uh, and over here we have um, dry wells. So we have yard drains up here and dry wells to allow these basins to drain during, you know, um, you know, frozen ground conditions, so to speak, where you might get a layer of snow and then like a layer of ice or snow again and rain and that type of thing. So we'd like to have the ability in winter months for these things to have a little bit more, a little bit infiltration um, that we can count on in the event that there's some lensing that happens with some of the frozen conditions. We also have a catch basin in front here that's handling um, the water up front and then running back along the edge of the pavement here, a little bit difficult to see that runs into another flared end. Um, that also has a water quality unit and then runs to the four, sediment four bay here, which is also sized for the proper storm events. We have pretty much a vegetated site completely from route five. So 
I would say approximately anywhere from 200 to uh, probably almost 400 feet. We're going to remain, the, the site will remain vegetated. This proposed, or this crenulated pattern that you see in this line work right here is the proposed tree line. So anything outside of that you can consider will be untouched. So that's essentially our limit of work, which is also shown on our grading plan. And you know the area in here will need to be uh, cleared and excavated and then graded for the proposed use. But everything outside of that will remain vegetated. So it's kind of nice that you come off of the curb cut with minimal visibility to the facility, come in uh, across, the, across the wetland resource area, and then come back into the site. We are, as I discussed, um, crossing the, on the existing location, but we will need to upgrade that. That's one of the key components of our upcoming notice of intent filing with the Conservation Commission. Uh, this area is mapped as floodplain uh, right up near the, near the river. However, uh, when FEMA mapped it, they did not provide an elevation. So there's a zone map, but there's no elevation. So under the hydraulic handbook for conservation commissioners, um, we will be, uh, with, their with the guidance provided, we'll be providing a, uh, an H&H &H study that will uh, show the, the hydro hydrogeologic and hydraulic characteristics of that area of the, and, and the contributing area of that river so that we can properly size a new culvert to be placed um, at the, pretty much at the crossing location that exists now. That will also be required to meet the stream crossing standards that the Army Corps of Engineers has promulgated a few years back and will be required to meet all of the other performance standards associated with bordering land subject to flooding, um, buffer zone, riverfront area, etc. So the kind of a, the trick of getting to the site um, once we deal with all the conservation performance standards kind of gets a lot easier as you get in and then it's fairly straightforward. Uh, the majority of the internal portion of the site is obviously upland and we're focusing on development at that, at that point. The plan you're looking at now is shows uh, some basic plantings, um, a, a few plantings around the stormwater basin in front. As mentioned, everything else is going to remain vegetated and buffers will be maintained um, for the adjacent properties. And there is a stormwater basin here that we're planting um, based on the, the DEP uh, guidance for planting such basins. We have a series of detail sheets that I can get into if you would like. There is a proposed retaining wall um, in a, in a few locations that uh, we typically spec a precast um, concrete retaining wall, large gauge block. It will not arguably be visible from any properties. So we'll probably use a fairly basic looking uh, concrete block. Those can be made by companies like Ready Rock or Aero Concrete um, and they're readily available. The rest of the details are pretty straightforward related to the drainage, uh, stormwater basin details for outlet control structures, et cetera. And then here's a little blow up of the crossing that we're anticipating. So if you, if you look at this cross section here, you'll see that that's essentially an open bottom box folder that we would be proposing. Pre-task would be delivered to the site. Uh, site contractor would prep the footings, drop that into place with a crane um, and then that would likely come in two to three, maybe four sections, depending on the weight of the, uh, the concrete and, and the delivery method and access. But that would arguably be placed here, this being one side of the culvert, this being the other. Um, this is the existing culvert right here, this rectangle, so much smaller now. So it will be much bigger, meet the openness ratio requirements, as well as hydraulic, hydrologic um, requirements of that process. We've also provided a photometric plan, which is probably going to be impossible for you to read because it's really small. Let me see if I can get a better visual. There we go. Um, so the lights are these red locations here. Foot candles are shown on the plan, these numbers, you know, with the decimals. And uh, this is the general footprint of the area to be, um, to be lit. That said, these do not represent the vegetation, obviously, which would further cut off any, any light spill that would potentially happen on the property. But as you can see, there is essentially a huge buffer around the perimeter of the property, and there is no spillover as designed by the lighting designer and illuminate. But uh, beyond that, there is also 
significant vegetative screening that will remain. And then again, uh, on the way in, we will be very subtle, um, you know, just parking lot, I'm sorry, parking, uh, car, sorry, sorry, vehicle lights uh, to get people in and out. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have or go back to any of the sheets that I've shared so far and I appreciate your time. How tall is the proposed building? 35 feet is, it's, it's, um, yeah, that's the, that's the, I don't know if you can see it there. <clears throat> 35 feet measured where? To the peak? To the, to the absolute peak. Okay. Because that's the limit. That is the, the, the building limit, correct, yes. Yep. How wide is the driveway? Uh, I believe it's 24. Let me confirm that for you. It's supposed to be 12 feet per lane. Yep, 24 total, two way. How, how far is the driveway from the southern property line? It varies uh, at the entrance uh, on the Mass DOT right of way. Um, it's, I have to give you a dimension if I have one on one of these sheets. But um, this is 30 scale, one she goes 30. So it's approximately from the property line, I would say it's approximately 40 some odd feet to, to uh, at the line. This is 30 right here, Let me give you some perspective. Excuse me, that's from the property line to where? Uh, to right along the front property line or along the street. Oh. Right here, can you see that? I don't know if you can see my cursor. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm just wondering what to call it. Okay, yeah, this street line, I'm sorry, street line here, and then obviously closer along the edge here because we're trying to hug, hug the property line as it is associated with this wetland resource area. We want to stay away from that as much as humanly possible for conservation related issues. Now, is this in our commercial zone or our commercial slash industrial zone? This is in your commercial zone. Now, how would patrons get up to the second and third floor? You'll have, it'll, the building will have staircases as well as an elevator. There'll be a centrally located elevator here, um, an office in front. So correct me if I'm wrong, Todd, but this is uh, this 200 foot side, this is facing Route 5. Correct. And these would be the storage spaces themselves, egress, hallways, office, handicap accessible parking, and then the elevator centrally located, mechanical room, et cetera. And when you call it climate controlled, does that just mean heat in the cold season or is it AC also in the summer? Yeah, I'll let Todd speak to that. It's both heated and cooled. So the temperature is from 55, maintaining from 55 to 85. No, no hotter than 85 and no cooler than 55, as well as humidity control. How is it cooled? So it's there are several different ways, but oftentimes heat pumps or uh, air conditioning units with uh, with um, furnaces. But my uh, my intent is to is to use heat pumps and eventually put solar on the roof. So it's net zero to an extent from an energy usage standpoint because there's plenty of plenty of roof area for solar panels. My concern is is where the um, air conditioning units would be mounted and the noise that they would make for the abutters. Oh, the, so the units today are very quiet. They would be they would be likely roof mounted or ground mounted. They could certainly be ground mounted on the on the uh, north end. But they're really today's equipment is is doesn't generate much noise at all. So it wouldn't wouldn't. Uh, uh, it would be very easy to isolate the, the units from sound 
of the neighboring residences by just placing them, you know, the proximity. How close are the neighbors? Um, so I think we have a drone of that. Rob, do you have a, do you have a drop the drawing that <clears throat> that um, there's a request for an aerial from uh, from uh, during our planning board meeting. I believe that's been prepared. I don't know that I have that, uh, but I do have Google Earth, which I think will be helpful if that's okay. Um, I, I do have it. I don't know how to share it. Um, if I stop sharing, you can share by going to the top of your screen. Um, you'll, uh, I take that back the bottom middle of your screen. You should see a green share screen button. So I, first I have to pull up my email to do that. And then let's see if I can. No, it's on the zoom. So may not have the document, I think. How do I share screen again? One more time. Uh, middle bottom of the window that you're looking at, there should be a green share screen button with an arrow in it. Let's see. Um, hmm. So, what's the name of the hot dog place next door? I can pull it up probably. I, I can also email it to you, Rob. And maybe you can share it that way. You know the name of that hot dog place. Tom's. <laughs> Tom's. 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 Yeah. I, I just sent it to you, Rob, in case, in case that's more effective. I see. Here we go. Share screen. Now I see how to do it. Maybe. Are you looking at my screen? Yes. Yes, yep. we can see it. Uh, okay. So Tom's is right across the street. Right? So we are. So there's a, so this is the, there's a house right here. We're right in here. So we walked in with the conservation commission right about in here. So there's a, there's a house here that's on the other side of the stream. Let me see if I can give you a better, better view of this, sorry. Uh, there's something, there's a house here that's on the other side of the wetland. Um, and then there's some houses up at the road here. Uh, that's incorrect. There's a house in that dark spot, very close to the property line on the south side, where the shadows are. Right there? Oh, to the left. Right yeah. there, and then a little further back. You can see it. Okay, sorry. Yep, it's hard to see. Some pile of something on here. Yeah. Yep. Where are you with the planning board process? So we've had one, pu uh, one public hearing. Uh, we continued the public hearing. We do have a conservation filing. Um, they knew we had a zoning board of appeals filing. And we have an upcoming hearing with the planning board. And then uh, we will also have an upcoming hearing with the conservation commission once we've submitted our notice of intent filing. Roger, I would really like to see that aerial that has the uh, distances uh, from the other properties to the north and the south on, on it. And it, we don't have that. Is that the subject of that email that Todd just sent to Rob? Yeah, I don't know. Thank you. 
go. So this should give us a better example. Can you folks see this? Yes. There we go. There's the hot dogs. There's the house to the south. There's the house to the fort. So there's 54 here, number 54. I believe is this house. It looks like there's also. It's also our garage and a two car shed. Got it. Okay, thank you. Um, and then obviously this residence here. And then the railroad here. So I also noticed you had a um, sign permit request. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, do you have the details of the sign that you want to discuss and I can show them where it is on the site plan? We haven't really drafted or, or created a sign template of any sort, but the, um, mm -hmm. so, uh, the, uh, yeah. So there's a proposed pylon sign. 10 feet in height with an area of nine square feet. Right. That's... I'm sorry, could I have those dimensions again? Sure, man. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so it's a proposed pylon sign. I will call that located on the north side of, of the entrance. And that would be 10 feet in height with an area of nine square feet for the sign itself. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Any signage on the building itself? On uh, the building, there would probably be something, it's just a sign, you know, designating the office, something uh, maybe on the door of the of the office area, but nothing, uh, <clears throat> nothing more than that. Okay, so the bylaw allows um, a commercial use, two signs, one attached to the building and one freestanding, each up to 10 square feet in area. I'm sorry, each up to 12 square feet in area. And then by special permit, the off premises sign. So I'm not sure that your is your sign off the premises that one up front or is it? It is within the right. Yes, yeah, so it is within the right of way, sir. Yeah. Uh, the, way that the, the way that the property line falls back, they have quite a quite a width to State Road. We so are with, we are within the right of way. So that um, provision says. <clears throat> Such signs shall not exceed nine square feet in area or 10 feet in height. So that's apparently where you got those dimensions from. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, just so we have all these in, in focus. Anything else about the project you want to have us uh, be aware of before we open it up to a butters? I don't think so. I think I'm all set on my end. Thank you. Okay, I gather there are some abutters here. You want to identify yourself and um, we can take turns. Well, if I may go first, uh, my name is John Fitzgibbon. I'm an attorney from Northampton and I represent Megan West and David Bergman who own the property immediately to the south of the property. That's on the bottom of the screen right here. 
you can see their property is really very close to that driveway. Um, is there going to be any screening on that driveway or, or, or to shield the building itself for my client's property? Yes, yes, sir. Um, so through the chair, if it's okay. Yep. Uh, so yeah, so we're planning on leaving the vegetation along the edge, but we are fairly close. So that is a, a reasonable consideration uh, to, or a reasonable uh, ask. So um, I think probably it would be prudent um, for Mr. Salor and I to kind of look at where, which areas may be visible, so to speak, from your folks, uh, from the neighbor's property and see if we can't supplement. We were gonna leave the vegetation, but oftentimes some of that vegetation can be a little sparse in certain areas. Um, so we, could, we would certainly be willing to look at that. And then if there's a need for an ample buffer there, uh, we would certainly address that accordingly. What is the existing vegetation there now? You know? uh, it varies. There's mixed deciduous, uh, you know, there's uh, both trees and shrubs. It's mature. There's mature trees and there's also understory shrubs, um, some Mount Laurel. Uh, I mean, there's all different types of uh, stuff. There's also hemlock. Um, but I would I would I wouldn't be able to tell you specifically what is on that line as we go back. So it would be valuable to really look at that. And who was the, what was the name of the other person that you wanted to consult with? Uh, I'm sorry, sir, I don't follow. Say that one more time. I thought that you said you wanted to consult with someone else about the vegetation along that line. And I didn't get the name. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Todd Salura. He's the proponent, sir. Okay. All right. Um, now, I noticed in your elevation plans that the building itself, it goes to 32 feet at the side of the building, but there's no indication of how high the peak is. Why wasn't that, why wasn't that? Had, yeah, to clarify, Mr. Salura has confirmed that it is 35 feet uh, at the peak. It can be no, no higher per zone. And how do we know it's gonna be 35 feet? Um, well, he made a statement that it will be and the building inspector would not issue a building permit for anything in excess of 35 feet without a variance from the ZBA. We have not applied for that. so. If Mr. Flora wants to get a building permit, I think he's going to have to adhere to that. Um, I noticed that the bylaw requires requires a 500 foot separation from other driveways on the same side of the road. Has that been accomplished here? Um, I'm not sure which one you're, uh, which section of the regs you're specifically referring to, but I don't know that 500 feet has been achieved given the. Um, on the same side of the road, uh, I would argue that 500 feet has not been achieved from other, there's some residential driveways here. I, do you want, can you refer to the section here? If I can, if you'll. But I think it's important to note it's a pre-existing driveway. The driveway has been there for many years. So. Yeah. Uh, it's on page 21 of the bylaw. I don't have the section in front of me. Unfortunately, I can't seem to get it. Uh, okay. We can look into that and make sure we're compliant, but I don't believe we're, you know, as Mr. Salura said, there is an existing driveway there now. It crosses the wetland with a 36 inch culvert. Um, so, you know, it's there. So we're not asking for a new driveway. We're just utilizing the same. Uh, we will be upgrading it. Um, and, you know, but there's we, nothing on the property now, right? So this is a, this is a driveway for a new enterprise. Uh, uh, that that's correct. It's the, the remainder of the property is vacant. It's been accessed uh, right now. It's wooded. All right. Just curious, what is the historic? What's the historic reason for that driveway being there? Any ideas? Uh, all I know is access. I don't know if Mr. Salura has any history on the property of what's been done over the years. I really don't know what, what you know. Just access to a commercial site that that. Uh, I don't know what the previous use was or if there was one, but there is a crossing. It's been in place for many, many years, and we're simply proposing to utilize the crossing and upgrade it in its current location. One of the concerns my client, well, first of all, the two concerns I'd like to address. One is you're increasing the size of the culvert underneath the, the roadway dramatically. And my client's property has a has a driveway with a, a small culvert underneath their driveway, and they're concerned about the 
the increase of water that may come down through your culvert onto my client's property and through their culvert. Are there any mitigations of measures put, being put in place to prevent that from happening? I, am I wrong in understanding that the, the water flows, does, does it not flow to the Northeast? It flows south. Southwest? Correct. So if your client, so your client, the culvert that we're installing will um, allow the water that's required um, to go through there per the DEP storm, I'm sorry, for the DEP standards for, uh, and, and for the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna disagree with that. The water, it, I've seen it flow and it flows north. So you keep shaking your head. It really is, it's, it's really a, a, unpleasant to continue to disagree with shaking your head, but. I'm sorry, I'll turn my camera this. off, but the, the water does flow south. Um, and I live at 64 State Road and I'm going to agree that it does flow south. Yeah, I see it here. We are in our arrow here. Yep. So, so I guess, so to answer your question, um, you know, when the culvert is expanded, uh, it will allow more water to flow through there. Um, that is a requirement in order for us to get uh, approval. And for anyone that would, you know, for example, if your client was upgrading their crossing, um, they would have to do the same. Uh, I guess we could look at not upgrading that, but I think um, I don't know that that's necessarily a solution either. Um, I don't have an answer to exactly how that will affect your client's culvert. I would have to defer to one of my engineers that I can, uh, that's working on it. So I'll certainly get some answers back to you, but it is a good question. I think it's a logical question. Um, and, you know, essentially what we're doing is we're taking the existing culvert and opening it up a little bit. Uh, it's not going to be a huge opening, but it certainly will allow more water to flow through there. Do you know what size culvert is on your client's property, sir? Um, I don't know the size of it, but it's smaller than, obviously, smaller than what you're proposing. Yep. <laughs> That's okay. a concern that we have. Well, with, with permission, we would certainly take a look at that. Uh, without knowing exactly the size, I, can, I don't know that we can necessarily model what, you know, what the effect would be, but certainly that would be prudent to do. And, um, you know, with permission, I would just take a quick look. I wouldn't walk into the property, but just take a quick look at the culvert, if that's okay. That will be fine. Thank you. Um, I've got a couple of other small concerns. One is the placement of the sign. This is a road, there's a curve in Route 5 there, and you're placing the sign in basically the right of way. And so that, that will hinder my client's view from their driveway. Uh, so there's a concern about the placement of the sign and whether it will obstruct you. You notice how the, the road curves there. And so there's a concern about that place. I do see that. That sign is, uh, you know, I'd say that location is malleable. Um, we would certainly be willing to look at that. We'll, we'll take, a, take a look at your science, I'm sorry, your client's um, driveway, and we'll take a look at exactly how that would be affected. And if there's uh, a logical shift or uh, adjustment to, this, to the sign, we could certainly do that again. It's a pylon sign. That's 10 feet up. So it's really no different than having, say, a small caliper tree um, you know, in your line of sight. So you certainly will be able to see around it. But I do understand the concern and we can certainly, uh, we certainly should confirm that it does not pose a problem. How many units, storage units, are there in that big building? Uh, do you have that number? What was that? I didn't hear. How many, how many storage units are in the big building? That's total count. Um, so let's see, it's on that, on the other page, on the, <clears throat> the, the building elevations, there should be a count on there. Um, <clears throat> well, there, there's a count of one floor. So is it, we just multiply by three? Correct. So that looks like there's gonna be, I don't have the, there it is. Do we know how many are on this first floor? I mean, I, without counting them all up. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I do not have the total. Uh, I mean, this looks like it's gonna be a massive structure. It's, it's, it's yeah. It's one of the reasons why my clients want some, some, some buffers. It, it is a large building, but there are many uses that are by right uses 
that would not require a special permit that would could be built in the same size and height as this for other uses. So um, we would self, address them. We would address them if they ever came before us. We're looking at this building now. Self storage is one of the least obtrusive. It's very very seldomly visited. Uh, it doesn't tax the city services. Um, there are many by right uses that would be much more, uh, much less pleasant, I would say, uh, that, that there would be no means of, of, of adjusting in any way. So we're, we're amenable to, to some changes that might be good for the neighbors for sure. But the truth is, this is a very, these are seldomly visited. People store their materials and they, they very rarely visit, two to three visits per day. Um, you have to keep in mind that there are many, many by right uses that would have much greater activity uh, that could be built within the building size and height restrictions and comply with all zoning and building codes. Well, have you ever heard of the, uh, the Institute of Transportation Engineering? Yes, no. <laughs> we have, sir. Yeah. So, so they estimated, I think, depending on the number of units there, you're going to get a lot more than two or three visits per day. You get, you get up to 100 visits per day, just based upon their calculations. Yeah, so that, that's completely inaccurate. It just, it doesn't, it, yeah, and, and you could certainly, there's one not far from there, uh, and you could certainly, the abutter that's, that's uh, Mr. West, you could take a look at how many visits are on the one just down the street. You never see a vehicle there. Very rarely do you see anyone there. I've been by it many times. I also am involved in another facility in Northampton and several others, literally speak, I mean, 100 a day is just, it, it just doesn't happen. So the, I'm gonna disagree. I think the data is very inaccurate. It's, uh, it's, these are not high use. These are people store their materials and they rarely come back. Uh, very rarely. I mean, that's, that's, you know. All right, but it's safe to say that you haven't done any traffic studies about this either. There's been no traffic that, study for this project. There's been no traffic study done for this project. We have not done a traffic study, no. All it is is your estimate. It is my experience with self-storage facilities. And I think that the, uh, you know, I think it's, we can confirm that, but yeah, so so if I could, if I could through the chair, I think it's obviously better uh, for you know the decorum that all all of our requests and all of our questions go back and forth through the chair. I think it's just better that way. Obviously, we understand the questions and concerns. Um, to answer this gentleman's question through the chair, if that's okay. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, so the short answer is no. We have not provided a traffic study, given that this is on Route Five and this is a fairly low traffic generation use. Um, we have not provided that. We don't anticipate uh, a change or an issue related to the level of service at any surrounding intersections. Certainly, if you're going to have an industrial use uh, like this, it makes sense to have it off of this type of roadway. Uh, that said, um, a, a trip generation analysis is pretty straightforward to do. Certainly, I'm referencing the ITE manual. Uh, the latest edition will certainly have updated numbers related to storage facilities based on the size and a trip gen analysis can certainly be provided. That said, I would say that it's not two or three trips per day and I don't know that it's 100, but I certainly think throughout the day on a given day in a successful location, um, you're going to have trips, but you're not going to have anything that's going to arguably change the, the characteristics. Uh, and again, we have, you know, we have a we have sight distance in both directions for both stopping and intersecting, intersecting sight distance. So we would anticipate um, that, you know, the trip generation again will be fairly low, but it won't be nothing. I just uh, the acronym for that manual? Is it ITE? ITE, yes, the Institute for uh, Transportation Engineering. Thank you. So uh, I wanted to make sure I understood one other thing that you said. The line around the building, there was a tree line. Um, yes, sir. Those are existing trees now? Uh, the, the, yeah, so let me clarify for you through the chair. 
Um, try to get the best sheet to look at. Um, I guess this one's the best. Um, so I'm going to do my real best to, <laughs> it's hard to draw with this tool I'm going to use, but if you can see this, um, do you see this crenulated pattern that I'm tracing right here? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that is, that is shown here, right? And then that comes along the edge. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a roadway here and there'll be slight, it's pretty flat, which is good uh, in most of these locations, but there will be this edge. So we, we are close to the neighboring property. Um, I don't know if, if uh, you know, in terms of screening, I don't know if they, um, again, I think they're, and I, if I had to guess what I saw on the aerial, it looks like maybe something's in here. Does that sound right? Something like that. I defer to Mr. West. Uh, that's about where the house is. And then the garage is going to be to the right, closer to the property line. Um, this is the property line right here, this, this line. Yeah, so the house is about that far off the road. The garage is further back, closer to the building. Okay, so maybe back here somewhere. So yeah, so what I, what I would recommend is, um, you know, if Mr. West is available, uh, we could meet with Mr. West and look at where exactly the, you know, the, the vantage points are um, and see how we can, what we can do to screen um, and, you know, make sure that there's no uh, or very little visual impact uh, for him. There will be mature vegetation that will remain, uh, but again, and there is some vegetation on Mr. West's property as well, but obviously, um, you know, it's something that should be looked at. I would agree that that should be looked at closely. Yeah, we have a couple mature trees. Uh, I mean, it's a clear shot to the building from the back of my house. Yep, understood. So yes, we would be happy. We would make ourselves available. And we can, uh, I can provide my information however it's appropriate. Well, let me, let me jump in. Does the board want to take a view? Absolutely. Okay, so we could combine that with the, um, the board view and, and you and Mr. West talking about views and screening. Um, Roger, could you clarify who the voting members are here? Because I was away when this was first introduced. I'm assuming I'm not voting. Uh, so certainly it's a good question, Deborah. The um, April 1st meeting was about as limited of a meeting as could possibly be and, and literally consisted of reading the legal notice, clarifying it as to the dimensions of the building. Okay. And adjourning because uh, we had not posted the notice of the meeting 14 days in advance of it. So you missed literally nothing. Um, <laughs> so that you could be a, a member. Uh, That's fine. So of, of our available people, we have the three regular members. We have Kristen, is Fred here tonight? Yes, he was. He was. Um, well, so we should make that decision. Um, I will certainly participate. Bob, are you participating? Well, uh, my problem is that if this continues to May 6th, I'm not available May 6th. That's correct. You're not. Well then, why don't we do um, Deborah, Kristen, and Roger, the voting members? Okay. Okay. All right, so then with that in mind, and we do have another meeting on May 6th, which is our normal first Thursday of the month meeting, we could have a view either um, this Saturday or the following Saturday. I'm afraid I'm not available this Saturday. So that makes it easy. We yes, I'm getting my second COVID vaccine shot. <laughs> that must be your priorities there. So yes. <laughs> we can meet on May 1st uh, at the site, which yeah. is Saturday. That's good for the butter and, and the petitioner. So, Mr. Will be available, sir. That works for me. 10 a.m., Roger. Pardon? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Wes, are you available? Mr. West, are you there? Let me let me double check with my wife. One second. Roger, did you say May first? Yes, 
I did. Okay. And we're just waiting on the time. Bob asked at 10 a.m. and I said yes to 10 a.m. We'll, I can do 10 a.m. Pardon? That's good? Yeah. yeah. So we're waiting, waiting on Mr. West. Um, I will speak out loud. I will say this this driveway issue is, is very intriguing. I can't recall a situation this is a law that relates specifically to Route 5 and 10. Um, I can't recall a situation where we had to address this, so that'll be... Um, I call it intriguing for us, the 500 foot minimum separation and um, the, the statement that it's a, a pre existing driver. So we'll, we'll certainly be looking at that when we have our view. And, uh, and so, for the record, yes, it's on page 21. It's, um, it is part of a lengthy bylaw under the heading article Roman numeral four general regulations 171-13 subsection D three A D three A I'm going back to the May first. My wife has her COVID shot, her vaccine shot at uh, it's between nine and nine thirty. Yeah. So if we could push it back a little bit, that'd be great. But I'll, I could be here. Oh, well, can we do eleven? Was that was yeah, that? Too that would be fine. Thank you. Let's do eleven. Roger. Yes. Can we correct for the record? We've been referring to David as Mr. West. I believe he's Mr. Bergman. I'm sorry. Just my, just, my apologies. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure that that's uh, in the record correctly. I will change that. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, All right, well, unless there's anything further, we will adjourn and then we will pick up on May 6th. Now we have some other meetings scheduled that night. Mary, what are, what's our time slots that we have open on May 6th? Uh, no, well, it's just a moment. I'm sorry, it's going to take me a bit. No worries, Mary. Well, I'm just looking. I was going to say, too, I don't know if Alicia would want her yard checked out, too. Well, Alicia is at the other abutter that's here. Just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> Can you let Alicia know when we would be coming? She, she's here. She's on the meeting. Oh, okay. <laughs> <I'm here. Hi. laughs> yeah, that I would like that. Are you available? Let's at clarify. Alicia? What's the address of, of Ms. West and Mr. Bergman? So 54? we are at, yeah, we are at 54 State Road. You guys are 54. And how about Alicia? I'm 64 State Road. 64, okay. What's your last name? Ellen. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble getting behind the shared screen stuff so I can check my files. Uh, uh, I'm having trouble turning it off. A minute. I'm Alicia. trying to minimize the, 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 the view of the Zoom stuff and it's not being any. Maybe, maybe the that folks are sharing can get it Okay. I'm sorry, that was my fault. All right, I will but in a minute then for May 6th. Alicia, how do you spell your last name? A-L-L-E-N. Oh, Ellen, okay. And my first name is A-L-I-S-H-A. Oh, there it is, okay. So, so when we meet for that view on May 1, are we meeting at 54 State Road? Well, technically we should meet at the, uh, at the premises Okay. I'm not sure that it has an address yet. You don't have an address yet, uh, do you? No, sir. You can um, you can come to our house and park in our driveway. That's fine. <laughs> we have plenty of room. And that's the, the 54? 54, yeah. Okay, thank okay, you. Good, thank you. I'll be with you in a minute.
Oh, I know why I can't find it. I haven't written it yet. Now, I'm, let me just check the legal notices. <laughs> I think we have a, var a variance at 640. Right. The, the variance was first. That's 640. I think the uh, town pump project is 7 o'clock. Yes, it is. So we've got two for 640 and then 7 o'clock. And after that... Uh, all right, well, we could schedule either 7.15 if we're optimistic or 7.30 if we're realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we say 7.30? Okay. May 6 at Mr. Chairman, before you uh, uh, continue the hearing, just want to make sure I caught, I think I caught everything. I took some pretty good notes here. So there was a question about trip generation that I think we can answer pretty easily. Um, we talked about buffering the property to the south. I will look into impacts of the culvert uh, on the downstream culvert. Uh, and then there was a question about whether or not the sign would block the neighbor's driveway. So I think the best way to resolve that is try to stake out the sign location prior to our site visit. So we can look at that. I'll also throw some stakes in at the corners of the building or of the buildings, I should say, to give you folks some perspective and you walk it and you walk in and you'll get a feel for it. Um, that'll, that'll probably make our, our time and feel most productive. Roger. Excellent. Roger. Yes. Just would like to know uh, one more thing. I'd like to know the height of the driveway uh, because if it's that close to the property line and it's bituminous concrete, um, there's gonna be some runoff onto the property to the south. So I wanna know what that driveway, what its uh, height is going to be. A foot, six inches, three inches, whatever. Uh, is mitigating mitigating runoff in this area is going to be difficult. Yeah, no, that's a good question. And because it was so close to the, like you said, it's because it's close, um, we're pretty much at grade. So we, if you look at this existing uh, gray contour here, that's 174 or 174 here, we're almost, almost at grade um, with the driveway. However, um, the water flows perpendicular to the contours. So if you look at this dark 174 contour, um, our water is flowing away from the property line and we do have a curb as well. So we're flowing to the north, uh, sheet flowing, I should say, across the driveway to the north. Uh, it'll be picked up in catch basins along the north side. Um, so nothing towards the property line other than what lands beyond the curb in the grass or in the uh, vegetation. May I ask one more question? Certainly. Um, how far is the pavement, the actual road from the property line? It's fairly close there. I'll get you a specific measurement, but I'm going to guesstimate here because I don't have a dimension right on there. I'm going to say it's about 10 feet. I'm sorry, I was catching up. This 10 feet is between uh, I would, I, If you could just add approximate to that, I would say it's approximately 10 feet. And I will confirm that for you. Right, but that was, we're measuring between where and where. Uh, from, so I'm assuming they're asking about the closest point, which would basically be along, you know, parallel with the property line here. So from here to the property line. Thank and you. Again, this is 15, this measurement over here on the far left is, is 15 feet. So it's approximately 10, but um, I will confirm for you folks. Usually I'm working with a hard copy plan with a scale and it's a little tricky with the PDF, so I apologize. All right, if there's no further, uh, no additional further business tonight, we'll adjourn until the view on May 1st at 11 a.m. and then the next meeting, May 6th at 7.30 p.m. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So board members, you have another hearing coming up. 
and at the um, looking at the agenda that Mary had put together, was there some piece of business at the end of that urban grown that you had on the agenda, Mary? Just oh. minutes review. Oh, just minutes review. Uh, so I've reviewed the minute. So I, because I won't be around at the end of urban. Oh, oh okay. Uh, I so believe that's all there was. Just that we just did the first two hearings and then we have the next one hearing and then uh, no other stuff came up. So <laughs> approval of minutes was it. So yeah, like I say, I've, I've read them and approved them. One thing on the minutes, Mary, maybe just going forward, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when a new meeting opens up and you start your minutes, you shortchange yourself because you don't say that you've read the legal notice and there were no objections or. I, well, I often put that in. Maybe I missed that this time. I, I, think, I, that's a, I think that's a good thing to have in there. Yes. As, as uh, general rule. Okay, cool. Okay, I, I will. Uh, that's your amendment. I'll stick that in there. <laughs> All right. Well, then I'll say good night. Bye, Roger. <laughs> oh, we're, and we're waiting for town council to get back on the um, question I posed to him, which is how, if at all, do we reconsider uh, the questions that the petitioner put forth on, uh, on the can of select? LaSalle slash Waitley RE Holdings matter. And I'll let you know as soon as we hear from him. All right, bye. Are, are we uh, going to do the um, Urban Grow? Yes. Yes, that's where we're headed right now. Oh, okay. Roger's leaving because he's not involved in that. Oh, right. okay. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. So, Good night, Roger. Good night, Roger. Dr. Herbert, you're here. I'm here. Good evening. Um, I'm assuming that we're just uh, doing the same thing we just did with the last meeting, that since we adjourned on April 1st, we are now uh, actually beginning the meeting. And I would assume, Deborah, you want in on this one? I am voting on this one, but you are chairing. Correct. And uh, who is uh, Kristen, Fred, who is going to be the other member? I can be the other member. Okay, so those are the three voting members and Fred will act as a um, alternate. I should also say, Dr. Herbert, that if, if indeed we probably will need to continue the meeting, we're not gonna be able to continue it to May 6th. I will not be available on May 6th. So we will have to figure out a, a different day. And that has to jive with what Mary needs to do in terms of, Mary, do you need to post when that's going to be when we, do an extension as, if we as long as it's a continuation i just need to post an agenda which is a okay. 48 hour thing okay so um we're ready to go and um the presentation floor is yours dr herbert good evening everyone i'm pleased to be back again and uh, i don't need to take too much time with you tonight uh you have a package of information and i'd like to share a screen to show you a revised um, design of what we have. Um, I did email this on April 1, but I, I see it wasn't on the list of attachments. So I will share that screen and um, Kristen, yep, thank you. Uh, if I can get it to go full screen. Yes, um, this is the site. Uh, it's on State Road and Old State Road. It has um, eight point, almost eight acres, 7.8 .8 acres, I think it is, and has wetlands down this bottom corner. Uh, we will be staying completely out of those wetlands that is all forested. And uh, we're, we're setting it up so we phase it in over four stages, phase one, two, three, and four. And if we get to phase four, we um, uh, will need to take down some trees where there's no wetlands, but at the moment we're, we'll be away. It'll take us a long time to get to the 400,000 square feet. 
So um, I'm not sure I have much more to, to share other than what we have talked about previously and presented, um, but this is the layout. Initially, it was going to be self-storage as well as um, cannabis growing cultivation. Now it's all cannabis cultivation. Well, we have to consider this a new application. And regardless of what we did um, on Christian Lane, we need to walk through uh, the entirety of this um, proposed setup with you. Okay. Um, so there was a draft uh, dated March 18th, uh, site plan for marijuana establishment at map 32 lot six. Is that, yep. is that draft, uh, the, is that the latest document that we have? That is correct. Okay. What, um, was, what were those, what was that date, Bob? Um, it was a draft that, that uh, was sent to us on March 18th, 2021. And okay. it's the site plan and it is seven pages long. And I believe that it is on the, um, the town's website. Okay. As such. That's the okay. only other, that's the only other document we have probably. Correct. Yep. Okay. Is, is it okay with uh, other members of the board if we just kind of walk through that? Yes. Okay. Um, my first question comes with, um, yes. uh, there are some, there are some things referred to as attachments throughout and I can't find those attachments. For example. Uh, they, they are attached to um, the website for the town. The I website. could not find the Cannabis Control Commission uh, letter saying that your application is complete pending final review. I could not find um, the Commonwealth um, registering you attachments four and five letter from the secretary of the commonwealth that you're in good standing with the secretary and the department of revenue i could not find um, um the name of the director of security for the project uh those are just am among the things that um i couldn't find and i think we need to see those things at some point, yep, yep. Um, you said and also electrical use for lighting and energy is provided in exhibit one. I don't see that. Okay, I will have to get those back for you then. Yep. Um, in addition, I think that it, it's, um, I'm not sure how the other members of the board feel, but the, um, the sketch that you just showed us. Yes. Um, we need to see, uh, the location of a butters uh, properties, uh, more of a, an aerial view as we saw with, uh, um, I don't know if you were there to see what was presented just uh, 15 or 20 minutes ago, uh, because this um, is, is self-generated, yes? You, you generated this map? Yes, and we have, uh, have it in front of um, a, a design engineer to get it through for us to draw it up more professionally, but everyone is so busy at the moment uh, getting out of COVID and they haven't been able to um, get that done for us yet. I think we're going to need to see. I would agree with you, Bob, that we do need to see that. Okay. Kristen, you in agreement there, Fred? Oh, yes. Okay. Um, so th so that, that's something that we need right away. We need those other documents as well. Should we just begin walking through the um, seven pages or do you have some questions, members of the board, that you need answers to? Or I, I, have, a, I have a question with regard to the property itself, um, just knowing it um, or having been in that area, I know that it is a very wet property um, I, I do see we have Scott Jackson as uh, chair of the Conservation Commission. I know that we are approving this permit only as to use, but I wonder if um, there's something that he could offer that might um, help us in our decision making. 
certainly would love to hear from you, Scott, if you'd like to respond. Yes, thank you. Good evening, Stephen. Good evening, Scott. I looked at your plans and I see where you've drawn the wetlands is basically from the DEP wetlands mapping, which is based on aerial photogrammetry and is not based on ground uh, truthing. I assume you haven't had anyone on the site to do delineation of the wetlands, correct? We've had two wetland specialists to go out there and have a look, yes. Okay, well, that site has come before our board before and it is full of wetlands. Uh, and I don't think that you're going to be able to get a permit under the Wetlands Protection Act from our board in order to do what you've drawn up now. So I came to this meeting just to let you know that early on in the process so that we don't get too far down the road before you realize that it's probably not a buildable site. Um, if I could just make one comment. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to challenge that, Scott, necessarily. But there is a uh, cut from the road taking water off the road into the field. Uh, there's a drainage swale across the middle, as you may know. Um, that had completely dried out before this last rain. After the last rain, that had filled up again, and mostly, I believe, from the water running in off the road. The Mass DOT um, has. Um, their road is actually out here more, and they have a drainage uh, ditch through there, which is blocked off because of another uh, road cut with no drain underneath the road cut. So I believe the wet water can be channeled away. Yeah, the, the way that we delineate wetlands is by using soils and indicators in the soils, which gives us a sense of the long-term hydrology of the system. Essentially, yes. the hydrology that was in place before Route 91 was built, or Routes 5 and 10, and uh, that area is wet and has been wet for a very long time. Uh, we had another applicant come, did a full delineation with a professional wetland scientist, and based on the mapping of the wetlands, they abandoned their project. Uh, I had another wetland scientist that called me up for another, uh, another project. I asked him, I said, hey, has anybody ever asked you to delineate that field uh, to the south of the filling station? And he said, oh, I did that some years ago. And I told the guy, just forget it. There's no way you're gonna build in there. So there's been at least three professional wetland scientists that have looked at that site and said that it's full of wetlands and unlikely to be buildable. Based on, on soils, not just the presence of water that you see on the surface, but on the indicators that you get in the soils, it shows that the water table is at or near the surface for a significant part of the growing season. We did um, three borings for the uh, potential to get a well in there. And the top eight to 10 feet was all sand. And then it went down to clay. But the sand can be saturated. The clay is a hard pan that perches the water table up near the surface. In saturated sand, it can be a wetland uh, just as much as any other substrate if it's, if it's uh, flooded or saturated. Um, okay, we have been out on the field and mowed it twice this spring already, and it wasn't wet when we were doing that. It's been a pretty dry spring, Stephen. And yep. it's not the kind of wetland that shows a lot of standing water, but it does have a very high water table. So it is a wetland. It, I think we're, we may be getting a little out in the weeds for the ZBA's point of view, but I, Scott, I really appreciate that because that may alter um, what Stephen wants to do or it, it may not. Are there other comments from or questions from board members? No, I think I think your point is well taken, Bob. I mean, we we certainly can proceed and uh, you know uh, and um, approve or not approve as to use under our purview. Um, so it's um, yes. <laughs> well, um, I don't know if if Stephen. May I call you Stephen? You can um, call me Stephen. Okay, I don't know if. Uh, 
what you just heard from Scott is going to alter anything. And I would, I would hate to go far, far, and then find out that it's not buildable for you. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you if you wanted to do more research. Um, yeah, we will um, have our wetlands people have a discussion with the Conservation Commission. Probably start with you, Scott. Is that uh, what do you think? Should we continue? I mean, um, we can continue and ask <laughs> questions and see where things fit, et cetera, et cetera. I'm fine with that. But there are several documents um, that we need, including the, the better map uh, and those um, things that were in the, the uh, state plan that are specifically referenced, but um, aren't there. Okay. Yeah. Um, does everybody have a copy of the um, site plan? Kristen, do you wanna put that up on uh, shared screen? I can't access because we're sharing screen again. I, <laughs> I can't get to my other files. I don't know how to do it. And Kristen can get into the website and- I, I just, oh, this time when I tried minimizing it, it did minimize, so. You just wanna put it up to discuss it tonight. Correct, so that everybody has, I'm not sure that everybody has the actual document in front of them. It, it, uh, which one is it? Site Along plan for the, marijuana establishment at map 32, lot six. So. I have uh, um, a site plan, the, the uh, uh, UGI what? grow site attachment, urban grow application. Click on uh, Bob. What actually is the name of it again? Okay, it's the lat on the on the uh, town's website on our agenda, not our agenda, but our yeah, our agenda. It's the last thing. It's the Sorry. last one listed. Site plan for marijuana establishment. Okay, yeah, that's okay. this one. Yep. Okay. Can you see it? Nope. No, I, I don't think you've shared screen, Kristen, maybe. You may have it, but maybe you haven't shared screen. There it is. Well, that's, that's, that's part of it. Agenda. Can you see it? Let's see. No, that's the agenda. Nope. Kristen, under um, Zoning Board of Appeals, under agendas, click on uh, tonight's, and then there's seven or eight uploaded files. It's the last one. What is the name of it though? Site plan for marijuana establishment, state road, lot six, Waitley PDF. Okay, yeah, that's one I'm clicking on, but it doesn't seem to be coming up properly. Maybe we should um, stop share for, there, there it go. is, it's up, it's up. There we go. Okay, so uh, we're, we're gonna walk through this. Um, as much as possible. There are two things that are occurring. Number one is whether the site is suitable for such use. And two, um, we would have to grant the waiver um, allowing for a, um, a smaller setback from the Tritown Beach. Now, I have a question regarding um, uh, recreational land. Some of the land which is around um, this parcel is owned by the Commonwealth and is part of the DCR, I believe, um, the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Um, and I'm just wondering if, see, I don't have, because the map you, you've given us doesn't give us the delineation of who's where, um, I'm just wondering whether that land that's controlled by fish and wildlife or whichever 
um, subset of the Commonwealth that is, um, whether that counts as, as a recreational use where you would have to be a certain number of feet away from it as well. Have you thought about that, Stephen? Yeah, um, the distance from the field, uh, from the field going across 91 and coming back down the other side is about 340 feet. And anywhere the field actually parallels 91, so it doesn't get closer anywhere to the distance on the other side to any of the land. So all of the land would be at least 300 feet. Um, if you stop sharing, I can share all the attachments I sent at the same time I sent this um, draft of uh, the site plan document. Kristen, you want to stop sharing for a minute so that and let allow him to? Yeah, I've got to just find. Yeah. <coughs> So in that document, you said that there wasn't any um, information from the uh, Commonwealth and so forth. This is just to show you these. This is out of the 325 email that was sent to the ZBA. Um, and it shows a lot more things in here. If I can, my mouse, if it goes up properly, I will show you the abutters and everything. Um, I thought I had sent everything, but <laughs> yeah, I know. Perhaps. This is this is the, uh, the field in relation to the distance from the field across the road uh, across at ninety one to the other side, and you see that this is no closer down here than over there. If I go up even further, um, one more, I think. This is the 300 foot setback. And all the way along, you see the eastern side of it does not get into the uh, recreational area of any place. Okay, and the, on, the, on the western side of Route 5? The western side of Route 5, there is one house. Um, I think that's the Saunders house. Um, I'll say it. I may have said that wrong, but just down here, there's one house, and then this is all commercial, uh, the truck stop area. Okay. All the rest is in forested and wetland. Okay, but uh, parcel seven or to the north of parcel seven, does the DCR own that? See, I can't tell because your map doesn't delineate. <laughs> I can answer that question for you, Bob, if you want. Sure. Who's who's speaking? Because I don't Scott. see the whole. Scott. Oh, hey, okay, Scott. Yes. Yeah, I have the the GIS map up, and it's it's owned by the Department of Fish and Game. It's Lot Seven, that one that you were talking about. Now, interesting question for members of the board: Department of Fish and Game owns it. Does that mean that it is for hunting and fishing and recreation, and is therefore I don't, know the an, I, I don't know the answer to that. How, how, how can I know? How can we know? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you think, Scott? <laughs> well, I know that the, it's called a wildlife management area because they want to provide public access for hunting and fishing. So I know it's open for public access. I don't think it's been improved for that, but I think it is preserved for that purpose. So that's an interesting question for us to think about. And perhaps I'll have to contact Roger to find out whether or not we need a definition from council. Do you think that's an appropriate path to follow, Deborah, Kristen? I, I do, Bob. I mean, I, I don't think you even have to um, contact Roger if you, you are the acting chair for this hearing. And if you feel you need that information and I don't know the answer to it, I think we have, we have a statutory right to counsel as ZBA. Okay, so um, I've never done that before, Deborah, perhaps. Uh, I will be happy to help. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. But, uh, we're Bob, saying Bob, I would, Fred Orlowski speaking, I would think before we do that, 
we should have some assurance that Mr. Herbert is going to proceed with his project here. Otherwise, we don't need to waste in our money on town council. Okay. Uh, and, and I guess the other thing I like to say is, is ZBA, I guess, kind of acts independent of other town boards, not that we ignore them, but we, some, we, we do listen to them, but I don't know if that's ever uh, been a major consideration in our decision process. So I, I guess, you know, what Scott is saying, yeah, it could be valid uh, reasoning uh, because for our uh, conservation commission, but for this board, I think you've alluded to it that that is not a major concern of this board. So, you know, otherwise we'd be waiting for all the other boards in town to make a decision and then base ours on that. I, I think uh, we need to be kind of independent of what other boards are doing. Fred, you're absolutely right in the sense that we, we have a very, um, a very clear charge in what we can do. Right. Um, and we can approve something as to use. Right. But any other board can offer their opinion, which may um, assist the petitioner right. in making a decision. So, right. I mean, we can certainly walk through, I mean, as Bob can walk us through um, what we need to do to approve as to use, but that, that doesn't, um, but that's where our, our charge stops. Right. And, and I would think maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know if the board would agree. We should ask Mr. Herbert if he's going to proceed with this project because it involves our, our time and resources. If yeah. not, well, then it, then it could be postponed for a later date. Do I have to make that decision right now? Well, well no. We we could we can certainly um, we have options. We can continue the meeting. We can do a site view in the meantime, before we continue the meeting, um, because we do have a site view scheduled for May 1st anyway at 11 o'clock, we could do one at 10 o'clock. No, um, I, I, oh yeah, we could, yeah, right. <laughs> sorry. And then you got, then, then we would be free to go to the next one. I'm sure it wouldn't take more than an hour. Um, I just, uh, I'm looking for your advice as to how to proceed because I would hate to go through all of this and then there not be a project um, only because yes, I, I, everyone's time is valuable. Yes, I understand. I think we need to have a meeting with the Conservation Commission before I can make a decision on anything. And so um, we'll try to schedule one with your uh, board there, Scott. Yeah, I would suggest that your consultant go out with me on the site, it might get resolved that way without having to go formally through the Conservation Commission. Okay. And, and I agree with Fred. I don't disagree with anything that was said. I'm not saying that you should make a decision based on a Conservation Commission's jurisdiction. I, I decided I it would be useful to come as a courtesy to you, Stephen, and to the yes. CBA. Thank you. Because I really don't think this is a project that has legs, and, and I don't want you wasting your time on it if, if it's something that you're not going to pursue. Thank you. So yeah, I can set you up. You know the person. She also used to work at UMass. What's the name? Mickey. Mickey. It's focus. Focus. Yeah. Okay. So Bob, are we continuing? I think that the the best thing that we could do would be to continue the meeting. We have begun the meeting properly within the sixty five days. We have all the time in the world, technically, to deliberate. And then we have a timeline after we've closed the meeting to write the, and submit the thing. So I think that it would be wise to let some of this other background um, transpire and then we can come back to it and um, begin again if necessary, not begin again, but pick up from where we left off going, walking through the documents and um, hopefully there'll be a new map prepared by them for us to better understand the lay of the land all around it. And then um, 
we can just, we can go from there. That would be what I would recommend. Okay. Kristen, what do you, how do you feel? I, I agree a hundred percent. Let's continue and. Uh, okay. So on. the question becomes, if we're going to continue, uh, we need to continue to a day other than May 6th. And that would probably be best because we have such a packed agenda on the 6th. Okay. Would um, you, would you want to just destroy your week and, uh, and uh, do Wednesday night, May 5th, if that's possible? Well, I, I, I can, I can certainly do the 5th, but will there be, an, is that enough time for everyone concerned to get the information that they need? Good question. And Stephen, Stephen, what do yeah. you think? Well, May I can 5th. get you. I can get you all those attachments by then. You have yeah, a lot of the, them, right? But not the map necessarily, and that's I, one thing that we. I'm not sure on the map, but it's not in my hands. Sure. Um, do you want to push it farther into May then, to make sure that things have collected properly? Maybe the thirteenth. Um, can Can I get back with Mary tomorrow or somebody tomorrow? and find out when they expect to have the map? Sure. Sure, and then, Sorry, well, then, uh, but that, that doesn't necessarily, we need to make sure that the people that are on, serving are gonna be available on whatever day. Okay, let, let's make it May 5th. And if we can't have it by then, I will, can, I will send a, a cancellation or postponement for that meeting. Okay, are you all, all right with that? I can May be all 5th right. yeah. at six at six forty p.m. Peter and Sandra, May fifth, six forty p.m. So, and Bob, is that assuming we're you're still going to do a site visit on what May first? Correct. That way, we will at least have the site visit done. And and Bob, what, I'm sorry, you want to do that at ten o'clock? Yeah, since we're going to be out doing yes. site visits anyway. Okay. And I and could I just where where are we to meet? Um, you go on Old State Road. Okay. Toward the truck stop. Waitley Diner. Oh yeah, no, I know Diner. that. I, I know your property. I just wondered where the where we are to yeah. meet. Well, we can just um, we'll find you there. Okay. Take, take just the one one caveat. There is a filming going on at the diner starting May one. A filming? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're using the, 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 the diner, uh, diner and State Road and, and the DeMaio parking lot uh, from the town to do a filming movie. Yeah, it's Dexter show. Week. Oh, the Dexter thing. Oh, God, we'll all be stars. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, I would assume they're not going to be on your property, Stephen, and we could park along the side of the road right in front of it. I think so, yes. Even though up further it says no parking, but not down there. Okay. Are we are we good on May first then? Yes, and good and on the site May viewing at ten a.m. Yeah. Okay. And, and May five. Sarah are, and uh, Maureen Nichols, are you here for this particular? Hmm? Perhaps not. Um, okay. Um, yes, this this is Maureen Nichols. I'm on the school committee and I was interested in hearing about this. That's why I'm here. Oh, okay. Great, you're always welcome for sure. It's a public meeting, absolutely. Thank you. Sarah, did you have a, a, any issue or concern? No, I, I wanted to hear how this went. Okay, well, it looks like we're gonna um, um, metaphorically kick the can a little farther down the road. May 1st for uh, site view and May 5th at 6.40. Are we going to be okay with that, Mary? Do you think? Uh, you the, town, mean, the town does have two Zoom, two Zoom. I accounts. always could check because sometimes things. Oh right, Wednesdays. I'll, I'll have to run it by Lynn, I guess, okay. and see if. <laughs> okay, so um, if if uh, if May fifth doesn't work because of other town meetings using um, both of the Zoom accounts. Uh, do you want to look at like May 12th or 13th I can as do an alternate any, date? I can do any of those days. Okay. I personally would prefer the Thursday, the 13th. Okay. So Mary, if, if we get jammed up on the, for the fifth, let's try for the 13th at 640. 
Will that work for you, Stephen? I believe so. I okay. just, oh yeah, I, I put my phone somewhere where I don't usually put it, but I found it. I'll just check. I, I don't think I have anything. Yes, I'm good. All right, so that's our plan. We'll try for the fifth. If not, we'll kick it to the 13th okay. and May I'll, 1st. I'll send an email to Lynn and let you know okay. as I hear. Okay, I appreciate it. Hearing. Okay, and um, Sandra and Peter will be in touch with you if, if something happens with uh, the date, so you'll know. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank Anything you, else? Okay, thank you all for your time and um, good luck to everyone getting ready for the next meeting. Thank okay. You. Good night. Thank you.